Here I am, Dana Nightstone, flying off to Italy on a new adventure. My last novel sold quite well, so I was able to take a break from my writing. A university in Tuscany invited me to be a guest speaker on literature, and I accepted. I was hoping for a quiet and peaceful vacation. Little did I know what mysteries the university had in store for me. From the moment I stepped into the library that first night, I had a strange feeling that things would not go as planned. Giovanni had never returned to the university. Upon leaving, he had simply disappeared without a trace. I delivered my lecture the next day to a class of bright literature students, but I couldn't get my mind off Giovanni and Ava. As I compared Renaissance classics with today's bestsellers, all I could think about was the mystery I had just discovered. I had to find out what happened to Giovanni, and the best place to search for clues was right under my very nose. Poor Giovanni. He had worked day and night to find a cure for the disease, but his research yielded no results. Suddenly, a glimmer of hope a letter arrived from a doctor in Casentino who had been experimenting on a similar medical condition. Did Giovanni find his answer in Casentino? There was only one way to find out. Using Dr. Farrow's findings, Giovanni had successfully completed the formula for the cure. But the trail did not end there. A special ingredient could only be found further north, at a monastery in the mountains. My gut feel told me that wasn't the only thing I'd find there. In exchange for the rare herbs, the abbot ordered Giovanni to steal secret files from the university. Did anybody witness the exchange? Who was Giovanni's murderer? Only a laboratory analysis could say for sure. Giovanni found the elusive cure and had all the ingredients, but it was too late. He was killed in cold blood for the callous motive of greed and greed alone. He never saw Ava again. The illness claimed Ava's body, but not her spirit. Even after death, she waited for Giovanni to come back. I had solved the mystery of his disappearance, but there was one more thing I needed to do. This is how Ava had always dreamed it would be at the cathedral one fine summer's day. Giovanni had finally found his way back. It had taken nearly a century, but you know what they say, true love waits. And that, dear readers, is what transpired during my vacation under Tuscan skies. That, and maybe a little something more.
And if anything else comes up, it will just have to wait. I dropped by Paolo's office the next day, but he was gone. His office was ransacked. I'd seen this symbol before. It was at the doctor's office. I had to get back to Casentino. Paolo had been kidnapped. I notified the police, but I had to find him quickly before it was too late. My heart was pounding. I'd done some detective work before, but had never come face to face with danger like this. I was armed only with my wits and maybe some luck. I hoped that would be enough. We ran out of there as fast as we could, out of the lair and out of danger. We took with us the journal of the Caicos Custodibus. It had information on all their members, victims, and targets. Paolo's still embarrassed he was rescued by a woman, but me? I was just happy to be alive. Of course, if I didn't make it, you would not be reading this novel. I hope I'll be just as lucky next time. <laughs>